Hey Defenders, welcome back. In this video, I want to show you guys how we can scan email attachments with Yara, and we're going to be using Shuffle to do so. Yara is an open source tool that allows us to scan files for malicious content, and it's using signature matching to detect malware within particular files. And a nice little feature within Shuffle is Yara is actually an app with that is provided by Shuffle. So we can actually do this all within Shuffle itself, which is pretty awesome. So a little bit of how this flow is going to go, we are first going to collect our email and we're going to use a trigger within Shuffle to collect our email. We're then going to scan it with Yara. So in this video, we are going to scan attachments that come with emails and that is what we are going to scan with Yara. And then if there is a Yara hit, we're then going to create alert within the hive so that our SOC team can know, hey, we have received an email with a malicious attachment. And a little bit of how this workflow is going to go. So I've sent myself already just an iCar text file. iCar files are benign files that you can use to uh, malware detection tools against. Uh, all malware detection tools have the ability to flag on iCar files. So it's a nice way to test without actually getting malware onto a box. We are then going to have a workflow that will collect our email. So we're going to set that on a schedule. I am going to collect the email and then I'm going to pass it to our Yara subflow and our Yara subflow is going to look like below. So we're then going to receive the email. We are going to grab the file of the attachment. So what you guys will see here in a sec is that upon collecting our email, we're actually going to upload the attachment to shuffle. So so the attached file will actually exist within shuffle itself and then we can reference Yara to scan that file. We are then going to have an if condition here. So if Yara has a positive hit, then we will create our alert and then we will add the attached file to that ticket so that our analysts can actually see the attachment for themselves and do any more analysis that they would like to do. So let's go ahead and jump on into it. And all right, so first let's go ahead and actually collect our email. So what I'm gonna do is use the so what I'm gonna do is use the Outlook app to actually collect our email. So I've got my auth set up already. Uh, so here I'm going to use the action of get emails. Microsoft is blocking it from being able to enter my inbox. So what I have to do is actually use the sent folder. So I'm gonna do that here. Uh, amount, I'm just gonna to set to one. Unread, I'm gonna to set to true because it is unread within my sent folder. And then I'm going to scroll down and this is very important. So what we'll want to do is say include attachment data. So let's go ahead and set that to true. And then I'm going to upload attachments to shuffle. So we need to make sure that is also set to true because we're going to reference that attachment with our Yara app. So Yara knows what file to actually scan. So we're gonna go ahead and save that off and let me make sure that this runs just fine on its own and that it's able to actually connect. And all right, that looks good. So we see those details here. So we see it connecting here. You can see uh, from info at opensecure.co and to was uh, to myself. And then if we scroll down, we see the attachment UUIDs. Shuffle actually store, this is how Shuffle will reference this file name. So if we actually open our admin tab here and go into files, we'll actually see our icartest.txt file here, which was just created and downloaded. So Shuffle is able to grab the attachment and store it within Shuffle so that we can reference it with Yara in just a sec so that's looking good the only problem with this is you see we are coming in as a list and it can be a little difficult to handle lists so what i'm going to do is take the list out of the equation i'm going to pass this to a subflow where we're actually going to do our yara scanning and i'm going to create a new workflow i'll say demo yara scan and let's go ahead and create this guy and so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to change the name here to just repeat email and I'm going to repeat back to me the full execution. And now let's actually pass data to this workflow and we're going to reference that from our collect email workflow. So I'm going to set up a trigger 
and that is going to be a shuffle workflow and this will allow us to control another workflow so we're going to take the contents of this workflow we're going to take the results here and we're going to pass that to our second workflow to our subflow which is going to do our yara scan so i'm going to do shuffle workflow and i'm going to connect those two and so I'm going to now select my workflow to execute. So that is going to be our demo Yara scan. This is the workflow that we want to execute next. So I'm going to select our demo Yara scan, and then we're going to select our start node, which we will reference our repeat email guy here. So our repeat email is already selected and now let's do our execution argument. So what is the data that we actually want to pass to the subflow? And that's going to be the messages list. Again, if you can take list out of the equation within Shuffle, it makes it a lot easier. So here we have a big list of actually the contents of all of our email, right? Because if I like, for example, if I minimize this, we only see one item within this message. So this is a list here. So what we want to do is pass this list to our subflow, which takes the list out of the equation. So the execution argument that we're going to pass will be our collect email. And we're going to reference the field that we want to pass. That's going to be our messages. And then we're going to use a dot hashtag that tells it it is a list because we want to grab everything within this messages list. So we need to include the dot messages. I'm going to say dot and then I'm going to do a hashtag to reference my list. So let's go ahead and save this guy off. And let me go ahead and save this one as well. And then, so within our subflow workflow, which we'll do our Yara scanning, we're going to just call our dollar sign execution. And let's actually go ahead and run this and let's see this guy in action. So we'll see this guy kick off. So we will collect our email, we will pass it to our subflow. So we see that and if we go back to our subflow that we just created, if we look at our executions, we see that this guy has just executed and we see our repeat email and we see all of the contents of our email. And now it's not a separate list, right? We see all of these items. So we have our body, we see all of these fields here. So we have our body, we have our header, we have data within our header fields, right? So now we've taken the list out of the equation, which allows us to pass data from one app to the other a little easier now. Now we're getting data to this workflow. Now let's actually add our Yara analysis. So here I'm gonna search for Yara and I'm gonna drag this guy over. And I'll just call this guy Yara scan. And here I'm going to select the action of, I'm going to select the action of analyze file. And here we need to reference our file ID. And that is going to actually be the value. We're actually going to reference our attachment UIDs as what we are going to tell the Yara app to scan, because that again is what shuffle is storing under the hood for us, right? So Yara will now be able to reference this file. And this goes for any other apps that you're looking to do either file scans or file uploads or whatever you're wanting to do with files. You will use the file IDs within Shuffle to be able to grab said files and do whatever you want to do with them. So, so let's go ahead and set our file ID. So I will paste that here. So here we're saying we're getting our repeat email. We're then getting our attachment and we are getting our attachment dot UIDs. So we'll go ahead and say done there and I'll set a timeout. Uh, I'll just say just a 15 just for a sanity check. It's not required, but you can tell it to time out if for some reason it's it's taking too long. All right. And now let's go ahead and kick this guy off again. So let's collect our email and then we'll pass it to our subflow. Our subflow will then repeat the email and we will then get a Yara scan. All right, so here we see our subflow getting kicked off. So our email was repeated, all the contents of our email, and now we're, and now Yara is scanning that file to see if it matches any section rules. And if we expand this guy out, we see, we see Yara detecting on the ICAR rule, right? So we see actually five, we see actually five Yara rules have triggered for this ICAR file. So we have this one that matched on the slash rules index underscore w underscore mobile dot Yara. We see this 
second roll triggered for this uh, for this particular Yara rule. So mal mal w underscore icar. We see this index at Yara. So here we can see that Yara has matched on this file. Yara has matched five rules against this file. So we can say, oh, we know for sure that this is a malicious file because Yara has matched five different rules against that. And if we minimize though, we see these guys here and we can see how many rules uh, are bundled with our Yara app. So here we have 521, right? And we match five different times. So we can know for sure that, hey, this is, Yara has flagged this as a malicious file. And now let's create a alert within the hive so that our SOC team can get eyes on it. And then we'll ultimately also add the attachment to the hive so that our SOC team can actually inspect the contents of that file a little deeper. So I'll go ahead and exit that out. And now let's add our hive app. So I'm gonna say the hive and let's connect this guy here. And I'll just call this guy create alert. And before I actually start to fill this out, I want to do a condition. I only want to create an alert if Yara has matched, ha, if Yara has detected that it is a malicious file, because I don't want to create an alert for every time this runs. You know, there's going to be a lot of times where we'll receive attachments that aren't actually malicious and Yara doesn't actually detect any rules against them. So we want to only create alert if Yara marks it as malicious. And a good indicator of that, right, is how we saw here. We see that Yara has matched five items, right? So meaning five different rule, five different Yara rules against this file. So let's go ahead and say, if the match is greater than zero, then we can assume that Yara has made a, has made a positive hit against this file. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select my my arrow here. I'm going to create a new a new condition. I'm going to use liquid to detect how many items are in our matches list here. And I want that to not be equal to zero. So I'm going to use an if condition to do that. So in this case, I'm going to say new condition and our source will be the value of that size of the list so telling shuffle take the value that is within this particular field so our our yara underscore scan which is our app and then uh because it is a list and it is the first array in the list which will be our zero that that's what we're specifying here. And then we're getting the matches field. And then I want liquid to compare the size of that field. And what I want that to not be, so instead of equals, I'm gonna say not, and I don't want that to be zero. So if it is equal to zero, then nothing will happen. Our create alert within the hive will not happen. But if it is not equal to zero, then Yara has made a positive match and we will go ahead and create our alert. So go ahead and submit that and I'll save. And then here you see our one condition is added to our line here. So now let's go ahead and fill out the rest of our create alert contents within the hive here. So for type, uh, I'll just call this Yara and for source, since it's an email, let's call it email. The source reference, I'll just say as the, so we're repeating the email. I'm gonna say the message ID, cause this is a value that's always gonna be unique. Yeah, so I'm gonna grab that. That'll always be unique. Title, I'll say Yara match, the Yara match on email attachment. And I'll say a description of email from, and then let's grab who the email would be from. So look at repeat email, I'll say header.from. I'll say has a malicious attachment. And I'll go ahead and save that off. And let's go ahead and give this a run. And now, assuming this is all done correctly, we should get an alert within the hive. So let's kind of follow this through. So we're first collecting our email. So our email has been collected and has been passed to our subflow, which we can see this guy now start to execute. So our repeat email is starting to execute. 
we see our Yara scan. And again, we see our five matches here. So that looks good. And then... And then we see our create alert go because it has passed our condition. Right? So now we get a result for create alert. And if we go into the hive, boom, we see our email or we see our alert has been created. Yara match on email attachment. And if we go ahead and open this up, we see our description email from info.secure.co has a malicious attachment. So now, so we've created our alert. Now let's actually add the malicious attachment to our hive case so we, so our investigators can actually dig a little deeper into what the contents of this attachment may be doing. Or we can do further analysis by say, submitting it to virus total and getting virus total results back. So, so I'm gonna add another hive and let me call this guy, I'll just say add attachment. And the action I'm going to take is create alert file observable. So I'm going to, that's going to be my action, my alert ID. I'm going to reference my create alert dot ID, create alert dot ID, because if we look at the last run of our create alert app, we see it gives us an alert ID and this is what we need to reference so that our add attachment app knows what specific alert to add this attachment to. Now, again, we're going to reference our file ID and we can actually just grab what we have within Yara. So I will just copy that file ID and paste that there. And then our tags, I'll just call it, uh, I'll just say file. And I'll go ahead and save that off. And here we don't need a condition because we because our condition is already done with our create alert so if our alert is created we know that there is an attachment to add and all right let's run this guy all right so we see it pass to our subflow and we see our execution start to kick off so we're repeating the email contents and then Yara is doing its scan. Yara has found it as malicious. We've created our alert. And now if we look at our add attachment, we see our attachment has been added as well. And here we see the name of our icar test.txt. So if we go into our hive, and if we look at the preview of this alert, we now see our file as being attached to our hive alert, which is really awesome. So now, uh, now let's say we want to do some further analysis on it. So I'll go ahead and import it. And if I go into observables, we see our file is added as an observable here. And let's say we want to submit it to virus total. So go ahead and select that. I'll run my analyzer. Uh, virus total is the only one I have enabled as of now within Cortex. So I'll select that. And now Cortex is taking that file and submitting it to virus total. And we see virus total comes back with a lot of positive hits. <laughs> so we can even do further analysis within the hive itself. And our analyst can even download this attachment as well. So you see here is the zip file is password protected with malware. So we can actually download the actual attachment itself if we want to take it offline, like onto a sandbox or something like that and do further analysis there. So pretty cool. And now let's actually, since we know the attachment is malicious, let's actually delete the file from the user's inbox. So, and since we want this to run, if we know the, we only want this to run if we know the attachment is malicious, uh, do be careful with this because if Yara triggers on a false positive, uh, this would, this would result in the email being deleted if you add this extra step. So just a, a word of caution there to be careful if you do want to add. So just a word of caution if you do want to add this feature. So here I'm going to just select the delete email and then here we're asking for the email ID. So I'm going to reference that within my repeat email. So I'm going to scroll down and I'm going to select the message ID here and let's save that guy off. And let's go ahead and run through this workflow one more time. So we're going to again collect our email, which will then pass to our subflow, which will be this guy here, which Yara will then, which we are then using Yara to scan the contents of the email, if the, to scan the attachment of the email. If it is malicious, then we will create our alert. 
within the hive. We will add the attachment and then we will delete the email from the inbox. And there we go. So we see our Yara skin completed, our create our alert within the hive was created again with our attachment, which we just walked through. And then we see Outlook, and then we see because it is a malicious attachment, we'll say, okay, let's just go ahead and delete it from the user's inbox so that they aren't tempted to even open the attachment and risk the chance of infecting their machine with malware. So now we have automated the deleting of that malicious email, which is pretty cool. And we can also set our collect email workflow to a schedule so that this workflow runs periodically. So let's say I'll just set it to a schedule of uh, six. Uh, this value is in seconds, so this will be every minute. I'll just erase the execution arguments. So this workflow will run every minute automatically for you. That will trigger off your workflow, which is nice. And I've also uploaded the two workflows that we created in this video publicly to shuffler.io. So if you head over to their website and just search for open secure up at the top, you will see our two workflows that have been published uh, for you guys to download, to save and download into your own environment. So you don't actually have to create this workflow from scratch. Feel free to bring it into your own environment and start to play around with it there. So I think that wraps it up for today's video. I appreciate you guys hanging out with me and I will see you in the next one.